my big idea, if I've had any big ideas at all, is to fuse speculative drawing structures with fairly fine book binding to build an object that has a lot of uh, physical appeal and intellectual appeal and curiosity. It is kind of designed to drive people to hopefully ask questions. My name's Timothy Ely and I make books. I started making books a very long time ago. Um, I can probably push the story back to grade school, but uh, more relevant was when I got into college, I discovered ideas about portfolios and presenting bodies of work. And this clicked with awareness of libraries that I'd had for a very long time. And that connection to libraries made me think about the library book as a, a functioning art object that could have the same kind of expressive potential as a large-scale painting. I grew up in a hardware store. My dad owned a hardware store. I grew up around craftspeople. Uh, I grew up around people that made a lot of things. So when I started making books, it seemed to me that it had um, a lot of qualities that, that craft objects and household objects have, that they were, they were built, they had function, and they had beauty. And I was not good at that when I started. And so I would dig through libraries or I would visit um, special collections and I would look at books and just try to f suss out how, how was this thing built? Why are these corners beautiful and invisible? And everything has been um, basically like rehearsing, like learning to play a very complex piece of music, to memorize it, to instill it with nuance. So that's, that's been the push, and in like the last 15 years, I have really started to see um, that I wasn't going deep enough, I wasn't going complex enough. And the idea of emergent complexity, like how much farther can you push a drawing, can you push a binding before it either begins to dysfunction or becomes unreadable. The books have an architectural quality, they have a, a, a plan, but they also need to protect the binding. I love leather-covered books, but to me they seem vulnerable to scratching and handling. So and I began to think about, well, I can cover books in leather, but then I can also cover them in um, floor finish and sand and aggregates and materials that will make these things far more bulletproof and durable over time. I like these things to have that sort of medieval affectation where you open the book and you take a breath and you breathe out and you pray. And there is something about this machine, if you will, that really compels me. And then in this book, uh, this is 40 folios, so there's 160 drawings in this. Uh, that would be a massive show if we pulled these out of this book, framed everything and installed it somewhere. It would be almost undoable. But in this book, it's compressed, it's available. You can go sit in the red chair and turn on the light and uh, have this very, very uh, intimate looking. There aren't a whole lot of people doing this the way I do it. I, I know a lot of book binders and from those guys and gals I learn, you know, I learn so much from my peers, from conservators. Um, and my approach to this is unusual because I make a living doing this and I make these things because I want to see them. And I make books people can't really read. And that in itself is kind of weird. And I don't write these books, but I devised a little drawing system that I call Cribriform that looks like it could be readable. And it makes people quite crazy that they can't read it and I can't read it. It looks like it should be legible. But what I was after was I wanted the effect of captioning an image without actually writing a caption and making an explanation. Because the further I can get away from um, cogency of being lucid and clear, the better I like it. And actually, I want to figure out which of these we're going to scan. My wife, Anna, is my muse. She is my color coordinator. She's uh, an award-winning designer in her own right. And uh, I've learned so much from her, including patience. When I find myself up against it, like I don't know what the next step is on this thing, uh, she usually has some very brief words of wisdom that just basically get the wheels back on the track. And um, I love her for what she shows me, for who she is, her integrity, her place in the world. I mean, it's a big role. 
and I'm, I'm barely scratching the surface. The biggest thing I think is reading. Once in a while there's a phrase that just shapes a feeling beautifully. So I'm starting a book on invisibility or it's about invisible things. I was thinking this morning of how many qualities reading has that are invisible, that we may physically hold a book, but this whole translation of what's happening in the book and in our imaginal spaces is really weird, but it's all imperceptible. We don't see it. And so it tends to get like a lot of things that are invisible, they're dismissed. Once these drawings are made, they will be assembled into a portfolio, into a finished structure. These drawings are sequential. They do have a read quality to it. You go from the first one through the last one, and um, there isn't a linear narrative per se, but it all hooks together. Some parts are very gentle, some are very jarring. Um, they're very musical. They can start somewhat quiet, and then they can reach a crescendo somewhere about two-thirds of the way through the book and get very noisy, and then taper off, close at the end papers, and the book is closed. It goes into its box, and it's um, a contained experience.